morning, everyone. Let me introduce you to Dr. Eyal Pinko, who, uh, and I'll read for you very briefly his bio. I'll just give you a shortened bio so that we understand his credentials. Uh, for, uh, Dr. Eyal Pinko served in the Israeli Navy and Intelligence Agency for 30 years. He holds a number of awards, including the Israeli National Security Award, um, uh, IDF Commander-in-Chief Decoration of Excellence, Chief of Naval Operations Decoration of Excellence, and the Head of Naval Material Command Decoration of Excellence. Since the end of 2017, Dr. Pinko has been the CEO of Terra Strategic Solutions, focusing on business and competitive intelligence, influence campaigns, cybersecurity, and homeland security consulting. The company gained vast experience in projects all over the globe for medium and large companies, VIPs, governments, public relation agencies, and law companies. I want to thank Michelle Kahn for organizing this, uh, this uh, seminar this morning. We have until 9.50. Unfortunately, we have to do a hard stop. So, um, Dr. Pinko, please, why don't you get started? And thank you so much for joining us today. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I have something like um, half an hour or so? Yeah. Like 40 minutes? Uh, th 35 minutes, I would say. Okay. That's a race I didn't uh, succeed to do until now. So uh, I will try. I will try to do it as fast as I can. Uh, so uh, welcome and thank you very much for your uh, hospitality and uh, warm words. And I'll try to wake you up as, as I can in the next uh, 30, 35 minutes. Uh, so uh, let's let's begin. You know, um, when I speak with people about uh, cyber domain, uh, most of the people will tell me, uh, nobody cares about us. I have nothing to hide. Uh, you know, I have no secrets on my phone. Uh, the, the, nobody cares about my company. It's a small company or a medium. Nobody cares. No, why? Why should I? Uh, why should I care? And, and if I, I'm, I can bet on us, as we say on a shawarma, or on a, on a falafel, that if I will ask you, most of you, if you have any kind of security measures on your phone, probably most of you will tell me that you don't have, and your uh, your phone is a uh, is a totally computer. You know, it's it's a very high value uh, computer with many uh, data that you gain over there. And I will try to to show you that everybody, every one of us is a target. And uh, once you became uh, you become a victim, you are a victim. And it really depends on the um, the attacker that uh, he wants to uh, attack you and he wants to to gain from uh, from you. And usually, when we speak about cybersecurity and uh, the cyber domain, you know, uh, people think that cyber is an issue of technology. And uh, I, and I can say that cyber is not an issue of technology. Cyber, the, there is a component that it's technology. This is the, the baseline. That's the infrastructure. But when we speak about cybersecurity, we speak in a very broad aspect about a companies or individual uh, reputation and business continuity. It's much, much more than an uh, uh, issue of uh, technology. Technology, you can take advantage of technology, you can use technology to be more secure. But when we speak about cyber attacks, cyber attacks are on, in, on I will say that the average attacker, when we speak about cyber, will not aim to deal with the technology. There are technological barriers and uh, the average uh, uh, way of attack that the, the, uh, the attackers will do is to overcome technology. They will do uh, what we call uh, human manipulation, or how or how it was is being called in a nice way, social engineering. It's a little bit uh, longer the uh, 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 description for that. It can attack by physical measures and uh, also by uh, attacking the supply chain, which means that, for example, we are dealing with a case uh, from last week with, with a large company, last large construction company that the attacker stole 7 million euros from this company just because he was attacking the supply chain, the supplier of our client. And because there is a trust relation uh, between the attack, between the, the victim, between the target and its uh, supplier, it means that if I will go from the supplier to the, uh, to the victim, I can use this um, trust in order to have control over the victim or the target. I will say objective, okay, we call it objective, but 
the objective is the target, is the victim of the cyber attack. So only by going through the provider, uh, we you can easily go and uh, take the money and this uh, for this customer seven million euros just disappeared on one one morning. Um, so it's an issue that cyber because of that I will say again and again that cyber it's no it's in it's not an issue of technology it's much more than that. And uh, you know we we always say that we love we love to say that uh, Israel is a superpower in cybersecurity. So I can I can say that it's a it's a nice uh, myth which we use a lot in order to have a lot of work with that. But also the Israeli approach is to, as we say, let's defend ourselves until we'll die. But it's too, it's a lot of security measures, technological security measures, without taking the, into account that you need to be secure in the organizational level from the employee's point of view. And this is the holistic approach if, that if I will have the, the time today, I will also speak about that, that you need to have a holistic approach for cybersecurity, which is only one third of that or less is technology. So we see also, um, I just published, I, I sent over uh, uh, during Friday, I sent uh, to Michelle an article I wrote about the use of cyber uh, uh, domain in the Ukrainian-Russian uh, war. If she can pass it to you, um, share it with you. It's uh, speaking a lot about uh, the, the, the warfare, which was changed a lot when we speak about uh, cyber and how it's being used in order to create political uh, uh, impacts, military impacts, economical impacts. As I said, not only it's not only uh, gaining to or aim into uh, um, the the military or the security issues. It's much more than that. So um, I will I will after this uh, short introduction. I will start that the world that we know is not is not like we knew in the past. Everything is being connected in one big network that we call cyber. Usually, when I will speak about cybersecurity or cyber, people do not know what cyber means. They will say uh, attack, defense, you know, uh, abuse. There are a lot of words that are being heard when you say cyber. But I will try to explain really what cyber is in the next few minutes. You know that we will have the same uh, the common language regarding that. So we depend on the network. Our cities became much smart, uh, uh, smarter. You know, in, you'll go to Stockholm, even the, the garbage bin in the streets are being connected via a cellular network to the city to municipality in order that the processes of cleaning the garbage will be much, more, much, much easier and more efficient. So you can attack definitely as, um, and this municipality through the garbage bins because there is no security between the garbage bins which are connected in one big network to the municipalities. So our, our cities become smarter and we enjoy this or those capabilities. We uh, became more and more lazy uh, with enjoying the technology, but we much, much more vulnerable for it. So it's, uh, as we call it, it's a two ways a sword and that we enjoy uh, the fruits, but we more exposed. Everything is being connected into one big network. And you see uh, 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 even the power grids, you, will, you, you can see that in 2014, Russia attacked the Ukrainian in the first uh, uh, Ukrainian war. They attacked the Ukrainian grid, shut down the, the, the city and the, the regions that they uh, went inside there. For six hours, almost a quarter of a million of houses were in total darkness without any ability to do anything. And it's not only by war. You, you can see at um, uh, power grid attacks in Europe in the US by Chinese and uh, and um, uh, North, America, North uh, Korean and Russian uh, uh, players that are trying to bring chaos and as we say Balagan uh, to the cities and uh, you know it's not only it's not only during war it's in between wars all the time so it's something that we see the Israeli uh, power grid is under attack daily it's one of the one of the uh, largest portions of attack are uh, getting towards the Israeli uh, power grid. And the water systems as well. If you know the story, uh, one and a half years ago, the Iranian, uh, uh, some some of the Iranian uh, uh, attacking group um, uh, just tried to penetrate the Israeli water system because it's also connected to the internet in order to be more efficient. 
they they attack the water grid in order to bring chlor, more chlor to the water in order to cause mortality to people by only by changing the percentage of chlorine in the water. And once again, you don't need to go, you can stay in your bed with your pajama and cause massive damages to all of us. We, this is not that we are not part of that, are we protected and it will not be with us. And, and even if I will be a, a little bit more on that, I'm sure that if you have companies, you have insurance against theft and fires and floods and many other force majeure uh, events, but I I can I can bet now that most of you don't have any kind of cyber insurance, which is the most common problem or impact that we uh, we suffer in in, the, in our in let's say in the last decade or so. Uh, you can see here uh, examples from real events inside the U.S. Uh, caused by China and by Russia, uh, attacking groups. Our traffic lights are being connected to the network. Our cars. You know, I have a, I have a leasing car. I have an application in my phone. My my car is connected to the network, and uh, uh, I can see where it is, uh, how fast I go, or someone else, and more and more details. It means that, and you you, you can see in the last year that many attacks against the Tesla and Toyota cars uh, were over there by, you know, just by people that are amateurs and trying to to brag and to show that they can. But if we are now in a case of terror attack or the Chinese want to shut down your cars, it's, it's not such a big issue. It's pretty easy. Sorry to say that. <clears throat> but once you have a car with a SIM card that is connected to the network, you're totally part of the internet. You're totally part of the, of the cyber domain. <clears throat> Even if you don't uh, realize it, you're totally over there. <clears throat> uh, so the public transportation uh, cars, uh, or the aviation industry as well, and the maritime industry. I have no time, so I'm I'm just running through that very fastly. Um, and you see that even ships. You know, uh, I, I I worked a lot with the maritime industry. As I said, there is a ship 200 miles, nautical miles, in inside the ocean. Who can attack it? But all the ships are being connected via satellite communication to the internet. So even even ships. 300 or 400, 1,000 miles inside the ocean are part of the network. <clears throat> and um, there was a case two years ago of a uh, um, US Navy ship that was colliding uh, and drowned the Singaporean uh, uh, vessel <clears throat> because somebody hacked into their systems and changed the navigation system. So it was published by the US Navy. And after two months, they said, no, no, we are, we, uh, it's not like that. It was a human error. So it's, you see definitely, and it's not the first time it's happening. So you see definitely even aircraft and the ship that are totally in, out of our understanding uh, are part of the network. And because of that, by the way, also terror and crime has changed in phase significantly in order to, uh, <clears throat> to change or to be much ahead than the law enforcement agencies, whatever they are. Eyal, um, if I can uh, ask a quest, quick, quick question. Um, yes, please. Is, are, are world governments uh, trying to suppress information about these cyber attacks because uh, to, to prevent panic? Um, I, I, I believe that the, the issue is that uh, they, they suppress that and nobody publish, and they publish only few things that, oh, and not to, not, I don't think it's come from the issue of creating panic. It's, I think it's one side that they don't have the capability really to help the citizens from one side. And from the other side, companies and individuals do not want to publish it because, you know, if you publish that you are uh, you went uh, or you are uh, under a cyber attack, you're exposed. You're exposed to GDPR and privacy issues. You have uh, other other legal issues. You have reputation problems. You know, if you are a, if you're a company and you say to your client, say somebody stole your data, you are under a big issue. So I think that even governments, in most cases, do not know anything about uh, what is happening inside the country. You can see Israel. Let's say we have a really developed uh, uh, cyber authority. I was the consultant there uh, for three years. They don't know anything. Nobody knows really how many attacks occurred in, against uh, Israel. And it's all in all countries like that. Nobody really knows. 
Thank you. Um, so I, I, you probably know about the case of uh, uh, JBS, uh, the largest uh, meat provider in the US for, I, for a week or so, they didn't supply meat. I think that uh, the, the US uh, population, I think they made it because one of the, la the largest uh, clients is McDonald's. So a little bit less McDonald's will not harm anyone. But seriously, uh, seriously with that, uh, uh, they just cut the, the meat supply for a whole nation for, for uh, almost a week. It's not a, it's not a joke. It's a really it's really issue to, that the country cannot supply food to its uh, citizens, even though it's a it's a private supplier. And of course, then the same in the same breath, the same month, an attack against the colonial pipeline company. Once again, for all, ten days, this company did not provide fuel to all the U.S. Uh, states. Once again, you it's and this is only from you don't need any terrorists. You don't need any AK-47. You just need to sit in your bed and and operate the cyber tools. And it's uh it's it's uh it's it's happening. It's not a fantasy. They also thought that nobody will will hit them, but uh, here it was. So our money, our healthcare system. We can see that since the uh, June 20, 2017, there are massive attacks against the healthcare systems. And uh, it was increased uh, during the COVID. Um, during the COVID, uh, there was something like 7 million attacks per day against the healthcare services uh, in order to steal information, to steal uh, data of uh, blood tests and things like that, but also to create chaos and panic. Because once you, uh, like the case uh, that was in 2017, 34 healthcare centers in, in the UK was stopped for three weeks. Nothing was happening over there. So just think about a country that cannot provide healthcare, the basic healthcare services to its uh, citizens because of cyber attack. This is not nice uh, understatement. Um, our education is online and <laughs> nowadays criminals and, um, and uh, terrorists and states understand that they can collapse, shut down cities, countries, companies, individuals, in in one stroke of a cyber attack and if you see uh, this was published uh, last year uh, that uh, this was uh, with a survey from uh, from companies saying that the likelihood of uh, cybersecurity is uh, uh, to be a, to be appeared as, as a risk is very very high and it it's much worse than any any kind of uh, of um, uh, a, a, a pandemic or something like like any other natural uh, disaster. So we 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 understand that cybersecurity or cyber issues are very important. They are uh, common, too too much common, and uh, in, you will see that in most cases companies are not really uh, ready for that. They say, as I said, the more the it will be okay. And uh, you see that uh, once again, as I said before, uh, when you when we speak about uh, crime, you'll you'll see that in most cases, uh, criminal uh, activities now are much ahead in the in the cyber domain than the law enforcement. And uh, the face of uh, uh, criminal activities activities was changed significantly, and it's not like it was before. So cyber. Uh, when we speak about cyber, cyber, it's really the heart out of networks, how to connect your, your home network to the street, to the building, to the city, to the, to the uh, country, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And the real issue here is how everything is being connected to one big network. This is the main issue. This is the world of uh, cyber. And every, in the cyber domain, we have three uh, components. One is the hardware, what you can, what you can touch the keyboard, the printer, the computer, your phone. The other side is the software, the application that we use and the operational systems. But the most critical part, the most uh, vulnerable uh, part in this chain is us. These are the human beings, the, the operators. This is the most critical part when we speak about the cyber domain. So if I will bring it uh, in a very holistic point of view, I will speak about cyber warfare, which is in an academical definition, this is the struggle for data and information, which means that from one point 
I want to attack, exploit, control, or shut down any any type of information or information system of my opponent while I'm protecting mine. And it, this uh, definition contains a lot of things with it, and I will I will divide it into three six parts in the next uh, few slides. When we speak about the opponents in the cyber domain, we need to think or to understand that it's not the traditional way of uh, nation states or terror organization as it was in the past, but it also brings a new type of opponents. And first, of course, the criminal uh, groups or teams that are totally changed the way they act. We have also the activists that are trying to change and influence uh, the public opinion just because they have some kind of ideals that are, they can do crimes and things like that in order to, to promote their ideas. And it's totally criminals, but with different perspective or different motivation. The amateurs as well, we see them less and less and less because the obstacles or the barriers of technology, the cyber te technologies, not letting um, amateurs to have fun or to gain their ego uh, with uh, cyber attacks, but they are still over there. They are criminals that they don't understand they are criminals. They are criminals that are trying to brag, to show they, they, their motivations are pretty different and the, the tools that they use are much lower uh, with capacities. Last but not least, in this domain, this the, the worst enemy that we have, this is us. This is, the, this is the, the employee or your company's employee are the worst enemies because they have access to your whole network. They have access to your all information of the company. And from two, two sides, from one side, they can be innocent and they fall for uh, um, social engineering manipulation that they didn't even understand that they they had it um, by sending malicious email, by a, a prank uh, a phone call saying, hey, we are from the IT, please help us with this and that. So uh, when we do human manipulation, it's on, not only by what we see in the media or we see in news, they had a malicious email with a malicious link. Uh, this is much more than that. So it's a whole, uh, uh, it's a whole group of activities, operational activities that are that can take you down um, um, with, with a pretty innocent way. The, the attacker, the, the, uh, the, uh, the victim doesn't understand that he's under attack. The other group is, um, I don't know which is worse, but uh, the other group are uh, the employees that want to get harm or to uh, to hit uh, the organization just because of any dark emotions, like uh, now they want to take revenge. They didn't uh, they didn't get the uh, uh, the annual uh, bonus, or they didn't uh, they didn't they was not they were not promoted. You know many 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 reasons uh, for that, and they they have access to the to the company's databases and thing, and they can do a lot of bad things. You can see a case that was in Israel. 15 years ago or so, a lady named uh, Eti Alon, uh, she knew exactly what, she was a banker, a very excellent banker. She knew exactly what she can do and she knew exactly what she cannot do. And she knew how to manipulate, because she's part of the bank, how to manipulate the bank security system. So slowly, 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 she, uh, uh, she stole for four or five years, she stole money from the bank in a way that the system did not, didn't do any kind of alert that something is happening over there. After four years, she collapsed the bank, $250 million just went to the, to the, to the bad guys. And uh, this is a case that, uh, like any employee that knows what he can do or what he cannot, and they are the worst enemies of the organization. Um, in most cases, you know, when you go to uh, the CEO of the company and tell, and tell him you need to do some employee reliance, you need to check the employees. These, these are, the employees are a real threat to the organization. Most of the CEOs say, no, I cannot. They have their freedom, they, you know, all of kinds of uh, laws that are not enable the CEO to operate. And after that, they can, they get hit by, by the employees. So when we speak about uh, the cyber domain, we speak about different types of weapons from 
the old war that we uh, used to have a sophisticated and expensive weapons, maybe even times sometimes exclusive. In our days, uh, you can you can get to be a hacker in one week training. You can be in the starting level of uh, of uh, of an attacker. So you can gain tools. Uh, most of them are free, and you can have very nice uh, uh, successes if you are a, if you are a hacker. You don't need to go out from your bed for that. And as you can see here, it's very profitable. In the 2020, uh, uh, cyber criminals gain more than $1.5 trillion just sitting in bed and having uh, their fun. Um, and if you will ask me how many attacks per day there are, checkpoint systems are identifying almost 7 million attacks per day. In average, there are days that are more or less, but this is what is only what is identified. You, we don't know how much, how many the, 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 the systems cannot identify, and probably they're at least at the same the same number. So, just uh, just calculate how many attacks per minute. It's it's crazy numbers. So when we speak about cyber warfare, we speak about different type of things, and um, I will not go through that because of time. I I thought I will have uh, one and a half hours, but when we speak about cyber warfare, we need to speak. And to understand that it's a huge issue. It's a very holistic point of view. And it starts with the influence. We are all being influenced by the network. We are all being influenced of the uh, uh, of social media. So uh, it's, it reflects in, so in, uh, in election processes. It reflects when we buy things or when we are shaping our ideas and, and beliefs. And it's all be also being... Uh, in, in time of war, you see what is happening in Ukraine. The critical part of cyber in the cyber domain was to influence the thoughts, minds, beliefs of the Russians, of the Ukrainian, of the international community. This is what the main idea of there. The other part is doing in, uh, in collecting intelligence to understand what, what can be done or how can be uh, the, the network can be used in order to uh, collect information about us. And I will show you a short movie for that. Other part is cyber warfare in the in cyber electronic warfare, which means that most of it is to how to jam or spoof our GPS or our navigation system. We are all using uh, Google Maps or Waze or any other navigation system. Try to imagine that with a very small and and the cheap uh, component, we can destruct all our navigation capabilities. I don't have time for that, but I, I prepared for you a, a whole presentation about how crime has changed its face and how you can buy everything, literally everything, on darknet from drugs, women, children, weapons, identities, uh, driving license, and everything is original, by the way. You can do everything online with totally being totally anonymous. So the, the, um, the ability to operate from darknet, which all of you can, it just you need to install an application. We call it Tor. You can download it from your Apple Store or from your Google Store. Three minutes and you can enter the darknet. So also being anonymous or over there, it's uh, you know criminals act nowadays uh, act differently. And of course, on top of that, you have the attacking capability and the security. So I have something like ten minutes or so. I will just show you in a glance a uh, few things that I want to go through. Uh, this is a, a GPS a jammer. You can see that you can buy it online in uh, eBay or uh, Amazon, something like $43, uh, dollars, US dollars. This uh, small toy with on and off, you can jam all GPS reception in a range of 50 kilometers. So just imagine you can sit in your home and block all GPS reception in the nearest airport. It's it's a very... Uh, it's very uh, a not nice threat saying on that. So this is uh, one example. I will just go briefly in the next uh, ten minutes, just in order to uh, you know to that you will have the impression. I, I, in in my long presentation, I speak about cyber crime, in which is for us as human beings, what is more important and critical is identity theft. In 2022, in 2022. I will show you the US, uh, US uh, data. 
2.5 million identities were stolen. It's not by, it's not identities, I don't mean your credit cards, because this is another 2 million cases. But 2.5 Americans last year reported that their identity was stolen. Identity, it's your name, it's your uh, ID number or social number, whatever it is, your date of birth, and all your other data like uh, clinical or health data, bank accounts, and things that can be used in order to go to the bank and open a new account or take loans. And this is not so easy. This is not uh, not so, it, it's very easy, I wanted to say, sorry. So it happened last year only to 2.5 million Americans, that's all. We don't know numbers about Europe because they are not reporting that, they are afraid. I, I don't know, we don't have any, any data, as the rabbi said, uh, asked me before, we don't have any really idea instead, except of what is happening in the US. So. You're, you're totally exposed, you know. Think, for example, take into uh, consideration the issue of cryptocurrency. <clears throat> People think that if they will invest money and put it in the crypto wallet, they are totally their money is totally protected. Last year, seventeen million dollars were stolen from cryptocurrency wallet. To crack down a cryptocurrency uh, wallet, it's not so, such a big issue. You just need to penetrate someone's phone to extract his or her uh, uh, key, a password key, and that's all. And by that, people uh, stole $17 billion only last year. Uh, going through, these are cases of uh, uh, false or fake uh, websites in which you go and you buy whatever you want, and these, and then you put your uh, credit card over there or your debit card, and you get nothing. Only, only uh, some kind of people that take money of your, out of your bank account. So there's a lot of also of, uh, fake uh, websites like that. And one of the, the most profitable uh, uh, markets in the internet or Telegram or in the net as, as, as it is, is to uh, buy and sell um, databases. So a lot of organizations are being hacked just to steal their databases and the databases is very valuable. Uh, you can buy databases from Marriott hotels, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, for five thousand, six thousand dollars. And it's you know it's your own. It's not that there is only one customer for that. So this is a huge market also that is running all over. So once again, your your private data is very valuable to the hackers. Just a short glance to the. Um, to the darknet uh, without a lot, of, a lot of explanation, but darknet is a way that you can be totally anonymous. As I said, it was uh, developed on top of the internet infrastructure by the CIA and NSA in order to uh, secure, to have a secure communication with the agents. Eventually it's a uh, public and you can do everything over there, totally, totally anonymous. So we can see that there are markets over here that you can buy drugs from any kind, uh, you can buy diplomas and um, and passports. You can see, or even you can buy for seventy thousand a Canadian passport. It's totally original. It's not a fake passport. It's original passport. So you understand there is a huge um, um, ch a chain that is providing this service. It's a uh, uh, there is somebody inside uh, Canadian Internal Affairs or what kind of ministry that uh, deals with that in Canada. And once you buy it in this website, in the darknet website, somebody is giving money to the, the clerk in the, in the ministry that provides your real passport. You become in $17,000, you have it in three weeks, and you can you become a totally Canadian citizen or a German one. And you can see here, you can buy a German passport with biometric chip. So it's, it's not a fake, you can go with that and cross borders. So just imagine I will take the rabbi identity, I will put over there my picture and I become the, the rabbi. And it, it's the true identity of the rabbi, but with my picture. I will be registered by that. It's it's not, it's not um, it, it's very easy. You can go, once you have a Bitcoin or any uh, cryptocurrency, you can go over online with the Tor and go to these websites and buy it. For 2.5 million Americans, it happens last year. It's not, it's not a fantasy. It's not a, some fake story. 
<laughs> and you can see a, a large markets of that. And as I said, you can buy people and uh, and chicken and kids. There is a huge market here that you can buy kids. You just need to pick its uh, a gender, uh, a color, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there you you have the delivery of a kid with all the documents that is needed showing that this is your kid. Doctor Doctor Pinko. Yes. Um, can you provide yes. us with some recommendations as far as yes. the, the best way for us to protect ourselves? Yes, I'm going there. I'm going <clears throat> there. You, see, you can see here how to uh, assemble bombs, um, how to buy weapons. You have everything here. Uh, so I will go to, uh, I will. this is uh, my whole presentation about explaining, explaining the attacking vectors. So in the next few, five minutes, I will just try to, how to do a, a real, uh, strategy for that. So we can do a strategy like um, it will not happen to us. It's it's working Bezrat Hashem from time to time. You can have a strategy that the government will pay for everything or the public or insurance will pay if something will happen. But the best issue and to, to do it in, a, I will say in the organizational point of view, okay, if it's, if it's individual, the best way is to to get a cellular phone put or your laptop put over there, antivirus, use the VPN uh, service, pay, don't don't uh, spare your money. It's, it's important to pay. Don't download uh, um, any kind of uh, um, application that you don't know who, who wrote it or it's not from a normal provider. Uh, look carefully. The awareness is very important. Look carefully in any link that you press, any email that you get, this is awareness. Only by awareness, you can decrease the probability of successful attack in 40 to 60%. So it, it has a lot of impact. If you, I, I read every email that I get. Who is the sender? I see the email. I, I, I We always said that I'm not, a, I am, I'm not in paranoia, but I know that someone is following me. I'm using the same, the same logic here. I'm, I, I, I have paranoia. I look on the sender, if the sender, if I know the sender, if the email looks suspicious or not. I, I use a lot of my uh, women intuition in here. Um, I see if the, the language is correct or if there is some kind of, you know, a language which is not so good, the English or the Hebrew, whatever it is. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm very suspicious for every uh, email that I get. For example, if I get an email or, a, or an SMS from the social insurance or from the IRS, I always look in the internet or call if they send me an email or an SMS. I, I never I never press. Okay, so if you uh, and, and I know it's it's a hard it's it's not it's not nice. It's a, it's a tough mission. It bring it brings much pain, much more pain to your life, but it's necessary. And will will that you will be much more protected. So awareness. Antivirus, uh, VPN. Uh, this is the this is the first step that you can do for your own uh, private assets, your phone, your laptop, etc. <clears throat> In the organizational uh, way, <clears throat> it's important to bring an envelope, which is the security envelope, which is being built on three layers: technology, to monitor, to protect, and if something is happening, also to contain the attack. In the organizational point of view, you have to be more prepared, which means you have to have measures that you'll know what will what to do if you will have an attack with procedures, with training, with uh, uh, simulations for the sea level management and all, but also with some other measurement me uh, measures like employee reliance, physical security. It's a it's a very holistic uh, point of view of preparedness that take into consideration your constraints from one hand, but from the other hand takes the threats that you have or what is the what can be the impact of uh, cyber attack against your, your organization and more factors of that. So this is the second layer. The third layer is a resilience. Resilience, it means that you did everything that you can, but now you're under attack. What will be the best way to go through this attack as fast as you can and with at least damages as you can. And for example, one of the most important persons in the, in to, to develop resilience is the lawyer, is the legal advisor, and it's the PR uh, guy. Because 
once you're under a cyber attack, you are under a huge explore, um, exposure, legal exposure, financial exposure. So you need to decrease it. Uh, how to, uh, if you need to, uh, to report to the stock market, if you need to report to the board of directors or to the customers, you need to have this in a very uh, good way that in that you will decrease the, the financial damage and the reputation damage as well. So it's not only about technology, it's also about business community with a lot of other aspects, human aspects, organizational aspects. So we're all being exposed. We are all we all can be a victim of a cyber attack and we need to think in a systematic, holistic point of view in order to bring secure to our uh, assets. Dr. Dr. Pinko, um, just two quick questions. Number yes, one, please. is there a VPN product that you recommend? And number two, one of the people online is asking the question about what uh, they've seen that uh, AI uh, audio mm -hmm. can be used to uh, fool people and have them send money. People are getting phone calls from people who say that they're a, a relative and things like that. How, how, what should people do to protect themselves from that? Yeah, uh, I, I personally, I use the VPN Express. I, uh, from, uh, unfortunately, I don't have shares in the company, this company, but I think they have a good uh, solution for a phone, for mobile phone, for, for everything. So I use it a lot. It's it's not so expensive, but it's worth the money. Okay. About AI and fake news or what we call deep uh, fake, um, it's it's a huge problem. And you see, as as time passes, yeah, as you as you said, you you see uh, fake videos, the fake uh, voice. For now, you you are uh, the only way to survive it is to be uh, with paranoia. To mm -hmm. check well if it's uh, if it's uh, your you, somebody is saying I'm your uncle say no problem I will call you in two minutes and stop the conversation and call him back to make sure uh, if it's something that comes with a video just check it if uh, the, the only way is to check to do the fact checking it's it's annoying it's not nice it's to live in paranoia we all know that it doesn't give us any any kind of pleasure. But that's the only way to overcome it, and, 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 and until some solution will be will be found in how to recognize this AI, because as time passes, the AI capabilities are stronger, and the ability to understand that this is this is a deep fake, it's almost impossible. Well, un unfortunately, we're out of time, but I, I want to thank you so much for this information. If even one person is protected uh, from fraud because of this very short presentation, Dayenu, and I'm sure a lot Amen. of us, a lot of us uh, uh, who have heard about VPN but never really realized what how important it is, will now start to rethink our priorities. Now, I want to thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pinko. And this this will be available. I'll send you the link to the to the YouTube, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to share this with many many more people. Thank you so much, and Hashem should uh, continue to give you Hatzlacha over all your work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please, this is my email. Don't hesitate. You can write me. So uh, it's uh, A-L-P, E-Y-A-L-P, at Terra, T-E-R-R-A, dash, S-S, dot com. And we thank you so much, Dr. Pinko. Thank all you very much. My pleasure. Enjoy thank the rest you. of the day, everybody. Take